All right, let's talk NBA 2K25 Community Day. Let's look at this first. Look at this gameplay footage. We got gameplay footage on hand, and it looks like it looks like Dirk broke dribbling somewhat. It looks like he figured out how to move. He figured out how to groove. This doesn't look bad at all. This footage is from Young Dirk, and he's. It looks like he's moving. He's getting some same side launches. He's launched. He's figured out how to launch. He's figured out how to same side launch pretty much out of an escape. And I mean, he's he pretty much is given a one on one, a one up tutorial on how to do it before the game is even dropped. I'm excited about this, at least from what I see here. At least I know that when I get my hands on the game, I have already figured out how to same side launch. Go watch his video if you want the instructions. He has a full instruction manual on how to get the launch out of an escape and a few other situations. And I mean, that's just astonishing. They put the time in 10 hours to figure out just a couple of little combo moves into a speed boost launch. That's amazing. My question is, does this court look any bigger compared to the player model? I know that the difference will be the camera that everyone plays on. Everybody plays on a different camera. So I wanna see if the camera that I play on, that's what I can't wait to get my hands on the game to see if the camera I play on shows the player model to court size looking any different. Now there's a few things that I don't like about this video. A couple of things that I saw in this video are kind of crazy. This, for example, this Ja Morant, he said it's the aggressive breakdown from Ja Morant and it's spammable and this looks crazy. I'm not sure if the ball is hitting the ground is it hitting the floor i don't know that looks glitchy i'm afraid of that type of situation because that can be exploited i'm pretty sure i don't know either way it looks crazy and i don't like the look of it but what it's worth i'm just trying to stay away from exploits or things that look exploitish like that if i can use that word that way either way i don't like it okay so while he says he hasn't figured out how to l2 cancel he has effectively figured out some new cancels that look a little bit more glitchy. And he came across a situation where he's doing like a kind of like a Steezo thing where he's kind of turning himself around and he says it's real glitchy. Um, I don't know if I like that because I don't know how hard that would be to defend some of those exploits. Some of those Steezo exploits are impossible to defend effectively. Uh, to be honest, some of the statistic dribbles, I mean, some of those are impossible to defend also. So to be able to get a guard boxed in those kind of turnaround situations are those spammy type of situations. When a player knows how to spam these dribbles effectively, they're impossible to guard. They're just impossible to get a handle on. They're impossible to cut off. You don't know which direction they're gonna move. And those are the guards that are, I call those the elite guards, honestly. So, I mean, the things that these elite guards may be able to do out of this new system, we might see some revolutionary type stuff. I mean, that's just that's just my word. Mark my word. I mean, to be honest, these are scary hours for me. As a lock, as a defender, I just don't know what to expect when I'm seeing this type of situation unveil right before my eyes. So good luck to us, I guess, because it looks like offense got a buff. And I mean, I just want to see what the locks are talking about at this point. Can we get some defensive footage to the boards, please? All right, now let's talk my team triple threat park. This looks amazing. This actually looks really amazing. My first thought from this is that we're going to get some extra eyes on this game mode this year. There's definitely going to be a group of folks who come over here to this game mode just to dance in this Rivet City Park, just to dance in this Skyrise Park, just to get a chance to move and groove over here on this Skyrise. They're definitely going to come over here just to move in this nostalgic park. Now, hopefully we get some nostalgia in the my career side of things but when it's no telling for right now what we do know is that we do have this sky rise from rivet 2k16 and we will get to move and groove over here but i mean it just looks beautiful i can't wait to get my hands on this on this game mode i know it's going to be a bunch of guys that are going to come over here and play this game mode just for this part personally i find it refreshing that we get a park with or a court so to speak with light this time like it's daytime on the court for the last few years in next gen at least we've been in like a dark neon room with like i don't know just crazy lighting but it's just dark and dim and kind of like ugh, it's refreshing to actually be outside in the light this time i mean old gen old gen had a 
a better lighting system in their 3v3 court because it was like gray but the next gen 3v3 court for the last couple years was actually black with background neon background just looking just crazy so it's refreshing to be in the outside atmosphere this time okay so everything i'm seeing from community today all this looks nice it looks fine and dandy but we can't forget that just a few components to the game do not make the full game it doesn't make up the whole picture there are a lot of things going against gameplay at the moment we don't know if there are going to be zenners in the game they're coming up with a script i'm hearing through the wire that they're they're preparing a script or there's a script prepared for the new meter or no meter or some situation where we can still be hit with the the bs and the whatnots and then also there is the pay to win aspect where you can get some of your perks a little bit early if you buy level 40 things like that things of that nature still don't sit well with me but it's all part of the game so i guess we got to take the package that they give us that they're handed to us and make the best out of the situation just like we did last year i mean ultimately with my team with the my team situation I mean, come on, it's always pay to win on that side. There's no way around it. The bigger pocketbook, the deeper pocket has the better team, no matter what. And I ultimately, I feel like I went way over budget in my team in 2K24. And I mean, I just can't afford to do that again. I mean, it's all up to you guys though. If you wanna, if you want me to bring you better content and bigger projects, it's up to you guys to get me monetized. We're on the road to 500 right now. We're close to 500, so sub up, like these videos, run these run times up, get the watch time up on these videos so that they're pushed out to more people and we can get some bigger projects going. I just need your support. It's all up to you if you wanna see this channel grow. So with that said, I just wanna say one more time, Thank you guys for everything, for all the subscriptions, for all the likes, for all the comments, even the hate comments. I appreciate all of that. Now on the my career side of things, I, it doesn't sit well with me that you can be, you can pay to actually get some of your badges up quicker or to get certain perks. I'm not familiar with which perks they're giving us this year, but I know last year for NBA 2K24, you could actually get core badges earlier. You can get your badges cored out earlier if you if you went ahead and paid for the season pass, which really wasn't that big of a deal anyway. It didn't matter much, a badge or two here or there. It doesn't seem like it matters that much, but to somebody it might, to certain players it might. I know I have the amount of stick skill where a badge or two extra for you will not make a difference in my game or whether I can defend you or not. But I mean, it is what it is. From a lock perspective, if I can just pay to get my my clamp badge earlier or to get primary badges way earlier than you have them, it, it sets an advantage. It does set up an advantage on the floor, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's not that serious. We're all gonna get the game, play the game we love. And I mean, grinders are gonna grind. Those of us who don't have time to grind, we're just gonna play casually. And we there's a game mode for everybody. That's the thing. That's the thing where there is a game mode for everyone who picks up the sticks. If you just wanna play, play now with your family at home, offline that's a thing that's a beautiful thing to do i mean getting together with the guys or with the crew or with whoever i mean if it's just you and your wife playing against each other it's always a fun time there's never a dull situation there's always a game mode for everyone that's the thing that i want to stress this year is that you don't have to get stuck in one game mode i'm going to show you plenty of game modes that you can get into and have fun on nba 2k because i mean i'm just dedicated to the game I'm, I, I love the game. I've been in love with this game from day one. So it is what it is. I mean, maybe I'm just one to pick the good out of any situation. I don't know. I have a lot of people that go against my views on the way 2K does business or what they have going on from year to year. I mean, but for me not to play the game, it would take it would take a whole lot of things to counter up at the same time for me to not play basketball, not play the leading basketball franchise in the world, Craig. For me to not play 2K, it would take it would take the perfect storm, so to speak. I would call it the perfect storm. I mean, there would have to be several situations that come together. I mean, I don't know how else I could say it. The gameplay would just have to be terrible for one. It would have to be terrible mechanics behind the game. I would have to be in a situation where I can't win in any game mode and I'm not having any fun. And that's where I probably would put the sticks down. I mean, a lot of you have put the sticks down where it's costing you a lot of money. And I understand that too. And if you don't have the time and you really can't spend the money, I get that. Everybody can't have a luxury of 
playing video games all the time. No, everybody's just not set up that way. Life's not set up for everybody that way. I get that. I definitely get that. I mean, I understood the Ty Depot, DBG situation. They both kind of stepped away from the game. Um, HTB kind of got hurt. He, he popped his Achilles playing soccer. He stepped away for a, a moment, but he, he really was dedicated to the grind still. Um, there's a lot of content creators here, but if you guys want to leave, I'm happy for you to go and pursue other career paths or do other things in your life and give me a chance to blow up and take that spot. I'm not opposed to that, but I do feel like DBG, you kind of fumbled the bag, so to speak. Maybe not fumbled the bag, but I think you let go too early because I spent the same amount as you. I heard the amount that you said you spent last year in 24, and I kind of spent that same amount. And I, I kind of twerked the game and had enough time to, to grind certain game modes to the point where I ended up with all the GOAT cards in the game for not that much. I mean, and yeah, I did get them kind of at the end of the cycle. It was season nine, end of season eight, season nine when I did get them. But if you would have stuck around a little bit longer and gave it a little more effort, I feel like you could have came out with a lot of good content, got a lot of good views out of it and made a lot of people aware of some of the ins and outs. Sometimes sometimes you just gotta stay with the grind, bro. I mean, that's and that's no shot at you, I understand. Hey, you have to take your path and do what you wanna do and figure things out for yourself. I get that, totally. But I looked at the video, just watching the video where you showed us your team that you ended up with when you, you left around season seven and the team that you left with, you know, around season seven, I may have had a similar team. I may have had a couple bigger hit rocks, maybe, who knows? And then pack luck does play a factor in that. But at the end of the day, I feel like when I stuck around for season eight, season eight, season nine, things just got better. Things just really got better. And I don't know, I chose when to pull packs, when to put VC onto the account. I just I just wasn't gonna go in for every every pack, every pack drop. I wasn't gonna go in on every pack drop. I, I just had to strategize that way and figure out a different strategy to come at 2K where they weren't gonna get the bulk of my money and I can actually get a lot of MT back and grind a lot of MT. And it took a lot of hard nights. It did take a long time. This was the worst year for grinding MT, honestly. And then your MT didn't go as far this year. That is that is correct. But I just wasn't willing to step away from the game and I'm not going to step away from 25 unless it's unless it's a terrible situation. Unless the situation is just really terrible, I do not see myself stepping away. So with that said, I encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel and to watch these videos all the way through, even if you just throw them on mute, just to help and get the watch time up, just to push me out to different viewers and new viewers that haven't seen the channel yet so that we can bring bigger and better projects to the, to the you, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. All right, hey, love y'all, man. Get out of here. Kobe! Your booze mean nothing. I've seen what makes you cheer.